is right, that no one is wrong, and that truthfully there is nothing wrong with them. But we know because we study the Word of God, and the Word of God teaches us the right and wrong. And so today I want us to think about David's question. What can the righteous do? What can we do in face of the opposition that we're against? What can we do just here in Stanley County when it seems that the righteous is falling by the wayside and have given up? Look at our pews. This church in the 1950s and again in the 1970s were filled to capacity. Someone give up. Someone give out. What can the righteous do? Would you stand to your feet in honor of the reading of the Word of God and read along with me as I read this great psalm and listen to what David says? And, and that question is actually in his writing. David pens. In the Lord I will put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to the mountain, or to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow and make ready their arrow on the, the stream, that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, there it is. What can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids test the sons of men. The Lord tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who loves violence, his soul hates. Upon the wicked he will rain coals, fire, brimstone, and burning wind shall be a portion of for the Lord is righteous. He loves the righteous. His countenance beholds the upright. Lord, teach us what we should do. Amen. You may be saved. In reading and studying this psalm, I found two options of what we can do. Every one of us does it from day to day. Number one, we look around. I mean, really, truthfully, if we look, and, and I don't know about you, but I, I like to keep up with the current affairs and the, the, what's going on in the world and in Charlotte and even in Avalon. Not much on Avalon because, you know, I, you know, don't even want to pay $80 a year for a paper that doesn't have a few stories in it. I go online and do that, but... But I'm intrigued with current affairs. I'm, I'm intrigued with this and that, but to the point where I'm just about to get fed up with it all. You know, we can look around and see what's happening to the church. We, we can see people within the church rising up and tearing it down. We, we can see the church and its finances falling and to the point where people are closing their doors because number one, they have not enough bodies, but also those bodies can't give enough to float a big place like this. We can look around and see the bad. But David has a little bit of advice I want to give to Grace Baptist Church from the Word of God, and his advice is, It's a little simple sermon because we can choose to look around or look up. You'll have that decision to make this afternoon. You'll have that decision to make on the 4th of July. You'll have that decision to make the rest of your life. You can either look around or you can look up. Let's unravel this real quick. And talk about looking around. You know, as David, as this, as he begins, we hear or we see that people has given him some advice. And that advice is very simply, run. You know, I love the old movie Forrest Gump. 
You know, all I wanted them to know is the truth of God. All I wanted, and all I stood in front of one man one day and said, you know, if your yay would be yes and your nay would be no, let me tell you, you will make a great deacon one day. Do you know he never spoke to me again? The enemies of the dark. So be careful who you listen to. Be careful what you support. You might be supporting the enemy that's in the dark. David said, well, we can concentrate and look at that. Because you know what happens to me when I concentrate on the enemy? <laughs> I, I get so depressed. I, I, I just I say, how is this ever going to work out? How, how is this? How am I doing any good whatsoever? You ever been there? If you have, say amen again. Oh, you're not trying to do good. You don't quit. That flew away, huh? Thank you. I mean, when you stop and think about it, friends, when you try to do what's right, you will be attacked because the enemies out there are fighting back and they're tearing you down. They're just like an archer hiding in a tree, fixing to stick you in the back. And the lo and behold, the sad part about it is society supports them over you. Society as a whole is broken. What did David say? I'm not making this stuff up. Read verses 1 through 3 again. Uh, look at verse 2. Look, the wicked bend their bow. That they make ready their arrow on the string. That they may shoot secretly at what? The upright in heart. And, and David said, if the foundations are destroyed. Friends, David looked around and said, what happened to Jerusalem? What happened to God's people? What happened to America? David said, we're broken. And I say today, our minds and our hearts and our nation is broken. So here comes the question. What can the righteous do? Well, David basically told us we have an option. We can look around and we can concentrate on that attack. We can concentrate on that enemy. We can concentrate just how pitiful the society is. Can I tell you a little secret? And I had to be reminded as I was studying for this. That in the, ninth, in the 1700s, our world and our nation in Europe as well as America had hit its all-time low when it comes to society levels. We were trash. And one man and one church and one group began to pray. And we find from 1700 to the late 18, mid 1800s, there came at least three great awakenings in America and in Europe. You see, it's good where you look. We, we, can, we can get and, and just give up. We here at Grace Baptist can just give up and say, you know, we're done. I, I mean, look. Or, we can look up. See, David was told, fly away. David asked the question, how can you answer? How can you tell me to fly away? To be like a bird and mount up wings on like eagles and fly to my own mountain. How can you say that? Because David said, I'm not going to fly away. I am going to do one thing and one thing only. I'm not going to stand and fly. I'm going to stand and look up. I'm going to stand and look up because there is where I'm going to find my strength. That's where I'm going to find my hope. And so I want to ask you that if you will just pause for a minute and listen to 
what David says on what we're to see. Now, we can look up for our guardian angel, which a lot of people love. And that's cool. I'd rather settle for what David looks up to. Or maybe you just look up for the windows of heaven to open up and fall out and bless you. That's fine. But David says something pretty interesting. He said, the Lord is in his holy temple. And the Lord's throne is in heaven. Do you know what he's looking up to? He's looking up to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's looking up to the great I Am. He's looking up to a sovereign God, Debbie, that knows exactly what tomorrow holds. He knows what 20 years down the, the, the our lifetime holds. And He is the one that holds the key. He is the one that will give us the power. He is the one that will give us the strength to go down that Okay. 
something what we need to explain and focus. Now, stop and think about it for a minute, folks. The God that's on the throne, He spoke a single line. He knows where you are. He sees and He knows exactly what you're about to do. So I got the news for you. We can look around at our problems or we can look up to Him. David said, Something that's a little bit disturbing. Something a little disturbing as I stop and look back on my life and look at the things that has happened and I truly have to say, you know, they may not have been my enemy, they may have been a test from the Lord. Because God says, I test righteous. David said, now you say, well, wait a minute, why would David, why would David appreciate those tests? Because if you ever really stopped and took David's life for an example of one test after another, come all the way back, all the way back to the wilderness, when old David was a shepherd, and David was with his sheep, what was he doing? He said, a lion, come on, me." God gave me the strength to take it. I grabbed it by the beard and killed it. And after the lion, what's, what came next? Anybody remember the story of the bear? A bear. A bear came out of the woods. David had passed the first test and had slain the lion. The bear had come and he slain the bear. What came next in David's life? Goliath. God was testing David to see if he would have the faith to slay the lion and slay the bear. And now he stood before a nine-foot giant. And David heard him profane God. He heard him lash out at God. And David looked at his members. He looked at his people around him. And he says, is there not a God in Israel? And David, because of those tests, stood up to Goliath. What was the next test? King Saul, his greatest enemy. See, King Saul hated David. And he plotted to kill him time and time and time again. He even tried to take a spear and pin David to the you know the most amazing thing is if David had not gone through the test of the lion or the test of the bear or the test of Goliath, he would not have been able to stand up to Saul. He would have flew the coop. He would have left. And he would have given up. Let me tell you something. God anointed that man. He poured oil on that man from the hand of Samuel. And every day, every day David looked. And for over ten years, he was not able to become king. God put him to the test. Let me tell you, David is the perfect one to tell us that God tests the righteous. Let me tell you, can I bring you back to earth real quick? Because i got one more test David's going to go through. God testing you in right now. Whatever it is, I want you to pause for a minute and stop and look and look back at how He's prepared you for this test. You see, the Bible is very clear, Christian. God tests the ones He loves, He doesn't hate. I've got to hurry because my time's about to go. But I said I would tell you about the last test of David. And you're pretty close to failing. And it was the test of his own son, Absalom. You see, Absalom swore that his dad died. And Absalom went around and he didn't go face to face with David. It took him two years to go face to face with David. But you know what Absalom did? He stood in the gates of Jerusalem and he said, you know, if I was king, 
you wouldn't have to wait in line for that. If I was king, I would feed you and I would do. You know what they were doing? Absalom was going around putting doubt in the minds of the people. And eventually, David flew the coup. Absalom chased him along with his army, along with David's trusted man of his army, leader of his army, chased David to try to kill him. Let me tell you something. He had stood the test of Saul, but now he was under the worst test of all. He loved his son. He would have given his own life for his son. He had to choose right or wrong. See, David could literally pin say, look at verse 5, the Lord tests the righteous. Wow. Well, because of the promises he's given. Let me close by saying this. God has given you a promise just as he gave David. You'll find it right here in this scripture. The promise was, yep, <laughs> he tests the righteous. But can I tell you, he punishes the wicked. He might test the righteous. But listen to what he says in verse 5. He said, but the wicked and the one who loves violence, God's soul hates. Upon the wicked, God will rain coals, fire, and brimstone, and a burning wind. Upon the wicked, this shall be the portion of their cup. That's God's promise, friends. That's God's promise to you, and He's made you a promise that if you quit looking around, and start looking up and hold him out of his promise and do what David said in the very first verse, in the Lord I put my trust. You see, judgment is promised to the wicked. Love the righteous. As I study men in verse 7, his countenance beholds the upright. Almost sounds like that God looks at the righteous, but they said it really should be interpreted this way. And I'm paraphrasing, but you'll get the just like it. That the upright will see God's countenance. That the upright His promise is that he loves righteousness. <clears throat> and so, friends, we hear it loud and clear. We hear it through John's pen as he pens the book of Revelation. And Jesus comes to him and he says to John, Behold, he is coming in with clouds. And every eye will see him. Even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will what? <coughs> they will celebrate. No. They will rejoice. No. They will go leaping. No. They will mourn.
just a, a devotion sitting one morning. And I was at the lowest and I was looking around at, at all the problems in the world and all the problems at Grace Baptist Church and all the problems in Stanley County. And God spoke so clearly to Elaine and he told Elaine, he said, quit looking around. Start looking up. And so on our Independence Day, let's quit looking around. Let's look up. Because God's still on the throne. Amen. And he loves the righteous. His eyes.